In this lesson, we'll be discussing series RL and RC circuits with differential equations. This is question number one. The question reads, a fully charged capacitor shown below is discharged by throwing the switch from position one to position two at time zero. Write an expression for A, the voltage across the capacitor, and B, the current I. To do such a problem, we'll need to know Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the sum of the voltage that drops across a resistor R an inductor L and a capacitor C in an electrical circuit must be the same as the voltage source E applied to the RLC circuit. So as the current is flowing in this direction, the voltage here and the voltage here will equal to our voltage source E. Let's write that down. We have voltage across a resistor plus voltage across an inductor, which I'll use the letter L, is equal to E. The formula that relates voltage and resistance is V is equal to IR. So instead of V subscript R, I'll replace this with I for current times R. And the formula that relates voltage across an inductor is the following. L for inductance times the rate of change for the current with respect to time. So DI over DT is equal to E. Now if I divide all of these terms by the letter L, I get the following. So dividing this term by L gives me the following. Dividing this term by L cancels out this L, and dividing E by L gives me E over L. And if I rearrange this where I put DI over DT as the first term, I end up with DI over DT plus R over L times I, which is the same thing as the following, except that I put R over L and multiplied it by I, is equal to E over L. The reason why I did it this way is so that you can recognize that this is a first order linear differential equation. Take a look. It matches the model shown here, where we have dy over dx, in our case it's di over dt, plus py, where p and q are functions of x only, but in our case it's in terms of i. And the reason why it's important to model it this way is because now we can find an integrating factor which we can use to integrate this expression. That being said, I'll find my r value next. We have r is equal to e to the power of the integral of p. Now we set p as this. That's our p and this is our q. So we have the integral of r over l dt. Notice that this and this match and they have to. Integrating this function isn't hard whatsoever. r over l is a constant, so we can pull that out. We have r over l times the integral of dt. This becomes r over l times t, and now this is the power to the base e, where r is equal to e to the power of r over l times t. Now that we found our integrating factor, I'll take this expression and multiply each of these terms by r. I'll fast forward this part and show you what you should end up with. Next what I'll do is multiply both sides by dt. I want to clear out this dt and if I do that, if I multiply the left side by dt, this goes away and we're left with 1 over here and 1 over here. So our expression currently looks like this, where we have e to the power of r over lt times di plus r over l i times e to the power of r over l t dt is equal to e over l times e to the power of r over l t dt. Integrating the left side and integrating the right side. The reason why I found the integrating factor is because if I take the integrating factor e to the power of r over l t and multiply it by the dependent variable, in our case that was current, and if you take the derivative of this product, you'll end up with this expression as your derivative. Therefore, if we integrate the left side, we will end up with the following. Is equal to, and now we have to integrate the right side, we can start by pulling out e over l, which are constants. We have e over l times the integral of e to the power of r over lt. Of course, don't forget the dt. Now, to integrate simple exponential functions like this, we need to do a simple u sub, where I set 
u is equal to r over l t, recognizing that r over l is a constant, and taking the derivative of both sides with respect to t, we end up with du is equal to r over l dt. I'll solve for dt by dividing both sides by r over l, and that gives me l over r du is equal to dt. I'll substitute this dt with this expression, and that gives me the integral of e to the power of u l over r du. This L and this L will cancel out, leaving me with E over R, pulling out that R, times the integral of E to the power of U, du. The integral of E to the power of U is simply E to the power of U. So we have E over R, E to the power of U, which we know is R over L times T, plus C, and the left side stayed the way it is. Now before we move on to our next step, I just want to replace this C with another constant because C is usually confused with capacitance when we're talking electricity. So I'll replace that with a K, and then I'll divide both sides by e to the power of R over LT. This will cancel out the following, leaving us with I for current is equal to E over R plus our constant K over E R over LT. Now we can find k by replacing i with 0 and t is equal to 0, which was given in the question. So replacing i with 0 and t with 0, this becomes 1. We have e over r plus k gives us finally k is equal to negative e over r. Substituting k back into our equation, we end up with the current in a charging inductor formula which is I is equal to E over R, look over here, plus negative E over R, this part replaced with this, times, instead of putting this at the bottom, I'll say E to the power of negative R over L T. And if I factor out E over R, watch, we end up with the upper limit formula, which we had discussed in previous videos. Pulling this out, we end up with 1 minus e to the power of negative r over lt. Therefore, the equation for the voltage across an inductor is in the same form as for exponential decay. The first term in this expression, e over r, is the steady state current, and the second term, e over r, is the transient current, this part. This is the answer for part A. Part B asks, write an expression for the current I. Now to do this, remember that our initial formula, which was I R, written right here, plus L D I over D T, is equal to E. If I bring this over, I end up with L D I over D T is equal to E minus I R. I've brought my work to where I ended off in question A. If I multiply both sides here by R, I end up with I capital R is equal to E minus big E times E to the power of negative R over LT. So replacing this IR with this expression gives me L DI over DT is equal to this E minus this E, they cancel out, plus big E, little e, to the power of negative r over lt. So we can say that the voltage across an inductor is actually equal to big E times little e to the power of negative r over lt. And there you have it. That is how to solve series RL and RC circuits with differential equations.